Let's talk about VeeamZip. VeeamZip was first introduced in 2012 as part of the Veeam Backup Free Edition. It was also part of the Standard, Enterprise, as well as Enterprise Plus editions. Today, VeeamZip is part of the Veeam Community Edition, and it's still part of Standard, Enterprise, as well as Enterprise Plus. So what is VeeamZip, and when can you leverage it? So VeeamZip is a utility that's used to create full VM backups without any complexity or the need to pause a virtual machine. So let's take a look at some scenarios where VeeamZip can be used. Have you ever wanted to take a backup of a virtual machine before making changes to it, but you didn't want to interrupt availability in order to export it? VeeamZip creates VM backups that are application consistent without any downtime so you can use it whenever you need to. VeeamZip is also great for archiving virtual machines onto disk storage. VeeamZip removes zero byte blocks as well as swap files and also compresses the VM to minimize the size of the backup itself. VeeamZip then encapsulates all the virtual disks as well as configuration files into a single backup file that you can put on removable storage devices such as a USB flash drive or even an external USB drive. There are many scenarios where an ad hoc VM backup can be useful, but when it comes to recovery, the only thing that matters is that you can recover the data you need quickly and easily. Now let's dive into the software to see how VeeamZip works. Okay, now that we're in the software itself, let me show you how you leverage VeeamZip. So I'm in my backup console here. This may look familiar to do depending on which version you have and, and you know what current release you are on. But I'm going to go ahead and click on inventory because I want to be able to see my infrastructure. I'm going to use a VMware infrastructure in this case, but it does support Hyper-V. As you can see, we've got multiple hosts in here. But I'm going to go back to my VMware infrastructure. And the virtual machine that I want to back up is this ATO wiki. This is our little internal wiki page that we have. And I just want to do a VeeamZip backup. I want to maybe move it to another host or it's just a long-term retention you know, backup that I want to do, but I don't want to mess with creating jobs or anything else. So I go ahead and select that virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and right click on here so I can see the different options in the job itself. So you can see VeeamZip, there's an option to go pretty straightforward to a specific directory. Maybe that's the USB external drive, whatever the case may be, that's just the default. But I'm going to specify a different location. And when I right click the one below that, you can see that you've got even more options in here. First of all, you're going to see your backup repository. So you can pick and choose where you want to send that backup. If it was any of these that I want to send it to, then I would just select the specific backup repository and send that VeeamZip archive there. However, I want to use a different location. So I'm going to go ahead and select local or share folder. In this case, I want to send this because it's a demo right to my desktop so you can see where it's going. So I've selected desktop and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now the job will begin. This is going to take a few minutes. So I went ahead and ran a job ahead of time so we can move right back into it. But the first thing, if I click on the job here, it's going to queue it for processing. You can look at the overall job progress in here, duration everything else. So now it goes through the normal process as you may be familiar with in, in your normal backup jobs of your virtual machines and the environment. So we'll let that do its thing. I've got a backup right here of the same machine. So that's how backup works. It's just that simple. You find the virtual machine that you want to back up, whether it's VMware or Hyper-V, then you select the location and you've got a couple of options there, whether that's a backup repository that's already part of the backup server or just attached storage that you want to send it to or, or anywhere else. And as you can see, this is moving pretty quickly. Now that virtual machine is about 41 gigabytes and you're going to see how awesome that compression and deduplication works and do its thing. So since I did the backup already on that same machine, let's go ahead and take a look on here. And I know this is not 100% science in here, but you can see it compressed that down and dedupe blocks to a very small manageable size that I can put on even a USB flash drive, external USB drive. It's only 6.8, you know, three gigabytes on disk, right? So provision, of course, actual size, all those things will vary, uh, but you can see how quickly that'll move. Also the target itself, right? How fast is the network path? How fast is the target as far as disk goes, spinning disk versus flash? All those things can have an impact on the speed of you know the, the the job itself. So we've got the job. So because that's still running, I want to let that run and finish. You can see the throughput speed and everything else. Just that's just based on the infrastructure that we have. Again, those numbers will vary depending on your environment. 
but I've got a full backup that I did earlier just before we started the video. And again, I showed you the size of the video itself in here. I'm sorry, the backup itself. Now I wanna go ahead and restore this. So I'm just gonna double click on that backup and you're gonna get an option here that pops up. You can go right because I've got the agent running here because I've got a Veeam backup console. It'll find whatever's running on the machine itself that you're trying to restore to or from. And once I had, you know, go ahead and click on that because I've got that already open and running a job, it's going to try to open another instance of that console. In this case, we don't have to do that. I've already got one open, uh, but you know, let's go ahead and let it do its thing. As you can see, the job is pretty much finishing on that other one that I kicked off. It's at 99%. It's just cleaning up some snapshots, finalizing the backup itself, and it's 100% done. It's that simple what we were on here. So now I'm going to go back to home where I know I've got some of the Veeam Zip VMs already in place. As you can see, it created a new job. I already had one. As I said, I ran one earlier. There's only one restore point on there. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize that one. So if you right click on this, now it's time to restore. Let's say that was a zip file. Uh, a zip drive that you plugged into a server machine that you want to restore to you'll actually get a pop-up like you do in windows and uh, it'll ask you where you know where you want to place that backup in so let me go ahead and go into my uh, restore options in here right i can just do a full vm recovery like anything else and restore just virtual disk restore certain files i can even go into the guest os if this was linux or windows in this case it happens to be a little uh, Windows box here. So let's go ahead and take a look and it'll ask me some options reason for restoring Just like a normal job. It'll ask you the same typical question So you should be familiar with some of these already and if you're not what well, you can see in on, on screen Some of the steps that it's asking you to do that's just for documenting You know who's doing restores? Why are they doing restores and now it's just gonna go ahead and open that file browser so that I can pick and choose specific files that I want to restore and then it'll let me choose where I want to restore to. And again, you're going to be presented with multiple options in there, whether it's local disk, another location through the network, etc. You'll be presented with several options. So let's let this load here for a second, and then we'll take a look at what those options might be. And here we go, right? So we can see I can get right into, you know, your typical Windows file browser. And again, this is not the machine that I'm on. This is actually the backup. So you can go you know, pretty deep into what you want to restore in here. We've got some databases, files. Let's say I just want to restore these release notes, right? Just for, for ease of uh, whatever we're doing here. And um, you've got a couple of options, overwrite or keep. That's talking about the actual original file, right? So if you select keep, it's going to restore the file from the backup and you know rename it essentially so that it doesn't overwrite the other one. If you want to overwrite the original one, then you would choose that option. I also have some copy to options. So this again will give me a different location. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the desktop again. Click OK. You can see here, this is really neat too. As a, as a Windows admin, you've probably dealt with this in the past. Preserve the permissions and ownership, right? Because a lot of times when, when you do restores, if you don't do that, then you may have to go back in, add some permissions to that file for people to be able to access it or, or leverage that file. So you don't have to do that here, which is great. I want to preserve the same permissions. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And just like that, that file appears right on the desktop and it's been restored. And that's all there's to it. So VeeamZip, amazing tool. It works really well for those quick ad hoc backups. No need to schedule a job. No need to do anything, you know, with uh, with setup. It just, you know, find the VM in your inventory that you want to back up. Select that VM. Do the VeeamZip to any location that you want, whether it's a backup repository that's in the infrastructure already or a new location like a USB or share, share location. And that's all there's to it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to veeam.com for more how-to videos. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.